Hi, you entrepreneurs. Today we have a very informative one. We have James Moran. He is the founder of Value Street Equity Partners. They're an investment company. They're looking for established businesses that need that little extra injection, a little extra life to bring them to that next level. Please listen, please subscribe, and tell your friends. Welcome to the road to growth, success of an entrepreneur. We've raised the bar. Learn firsthand from successful business owners and create your own path to success. I'm going to show you how great I am. It's time to hit the road to growth with real estate agent Vinny SD. All right, we are here with uh, Jim Moran, the founding and managing partner of Value Street Equity Partner. Correct? Equity Partners, yeah. Yes, okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. All right, so uh, tell us a little about yourself. Okay, well, um, first of all, thank you for having me down uh, at Bankers Hill area. I was just telling you before we got on here, uh, I love this area. Yeah. I bring my family down here whenever we can. I love the park. Uh, I love that you're strategically located near the chess club of uh, San Diego there. Uh, that's awesome. Are you a big chess player? I'm not. Okay. Well, I like to think I am, but no, I'm not. Um, Maybe the chess player in business, right? <laughs> Hopefully, right? <laughs> um, so Value Street Equity Partners, what we do, we're investors in small businesses. We're, um, we just got our start in January, so it's about four months now. Okay. And we're looking to invest up and down uh, the West Coast or firmly rooted here in San Diego. But we look in Oregon, Washington State, Arizona, Nevada. And really what we're looking for, Vinny, is just um, two things. Uh, businesses that have been around for a while, so okay. typically five to ten years, so established businesses, and businesses that we think can be around for a, a while longer. Yeah. So, so um, s businesses with some sort of barrier to entry, some sort of competitive advantage that we think will allow them to to exist and grow indefinitely. So, so what got you into the field? What got you in the field of uh, investing in other companies? Well, I think I came in through the side door, so okay. to speak. Um, so I think if you, if you looked at my career on paper, it would very closely resemble the, the rise of the internet. So okay. I sort of uh, started college in 2004, and um, I was encouraged by my family to, to study everything. So I went to a small liberal arts college in upstate New York. It's called Skidmore College. Okay. Um, about 2,500 kids, so really uh, intimate educational experience. I studied... I, I can feel your pain. I had 1,000 <laughs> students at my college. No way. 1,000. Yeah. Where was that? That's called Menlo College up in Menlo the Bay Area. Oh, okay, cool. So, <laughs> so I feel like, yes. Yeah. Um, so I studied uh, philosophy. I studied languages. Uh, actually, language ended up being my major, I think, uh, mostly because I sort of had the James Bond syndrome going on. I wanted to live in foreign, uh, far-flung places and, and meet exotic women. But um, So I studied computer science, but the the um, the thing about that time was computer science was completely disconnected from the Internet. So you had Internet and you had computer science professors. And, and so I took a computer science class. I think I got a C because we were programming in C++, and there was no real application to, to what was happening in the real world and the real economy. Um, and so to get... To where I wanted to be, I had a nudge from my brother. He's a couple years older. He said, yeah, I think this internet is a thing. You know, you should you should spend some time doing this. Um, and so, you know, at night after my studies and on the weekends, uh, as my uh, girlfriend at the time, not wife, can attest, I was sort of had my door closed and was learning to code and and uh, doing that. So that's how yeah. I sort of got started in tech. And then uh, just a series of, of companies and consulting jobs and so I, so your brother get a residual of, uh, of those future checks? <laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> uh, that's a sensitive subject. <laughs> so you, so you, um, you went full force into the coding, you went full force into understanding the internet. Mm -hmm. And so then what, after you graduated, what happened next? So I, so I had founded a business uh, that was making some money in college. Um, so that was my first sort of exposure to, man, this internet is a powerful thing and yeah. you could really sort of sense the w the impending scale of it and um so after i graduated i was sort of kicking around my hometown and with my girlfriend we moved in together and i sort of looked at her and i said hey you want to go on an adventure you want to move to san diego and, and so we did and wow. i ended up uh using my the skills not that i had been trained for in school yeah. but the skills i had developed on my own and i got a job uh, in carlsbad basically doing seo for a manufacturing company there 
and then uh, transitioned. I co-founded a startup with a coworker there, and then um, just sort of things kept going from there. Okay, so, so you told your your girlfriend at the time, now wife, mm-hmm. I want to move to San Diego, and she was didn't take any convincing. She goes, "I trust you." Yeah. So, so remember, I said I was chasing exotic women when yes. I was in college. So my wife is from Taiwan, and her okay. family. Um, uh, more or less spent their summers in California. Okay. So she was very familiar. I had never been to California, okay. but so she said, yeah, let's go. You know, I know San Diego and it's a great place and well, just easy, worked out. Easy enough. So you, yeah. so you got the job out here in Carlsbad, you did some SEO there and then you, you partnered up, you said with a, a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, how did that company go? So, so that company, um, it went it went well i'd say we we um were admitted into TechCrunch 50 which is i guess now TechCrunch disrupt um so we went and met mark cuban into the whole nine and you know uh, just, it was just a cool vibe being in silicon yeah. valley um it ended up disbanding just for one of the million reasons startups disband it was just sort of a fallout amongst the partners unfortunately and so nothing really came of it but it was just another experience uh, okay. to add to the to the belt i guess all right so you got some experience in there what's next what happened next so next um i'm just doing consulting i'm doing some programming for for friends and and referrals from just from people i know um and then i get a call from my brother who works in the ticket industry and he's he said hey i'm gonna i'm going to vegas with with my company and you should come out he's like you know this this ticket industry is really things are happening and I think you should just come see what it is. I have a suite at the Venetian, you know, we can go, go to these clubs or whatever, whatever it was. And so he had you uh, go to the clubs in the Venetian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're sort of like parties for, for <laughs> the you know corporate event. But, yeah. um, so my girlfriend and I piled into our camera and we drove to Vegas and, and we met him and he introduced us to some people and I can distinctly remember, um, he, he, he introduced me to one guy and he said, Hey, you, you should talk to this guy. He's really successful in this industry. Hmm. And uh, so I said, hey, you know, what's what's you know, what's the secret? You know, what's how, how do you how does one be successful in, in the ticket industry? Yeah. And he looked at me with a straight face. He goes, get in 10 years ago. Wow. OK. <laughs> so um, but you could see there was a lot of uh, excitement there. Yeah. Um, so specifically with the ticket resale industry, it, you know, it historically had been such a shady sort of, you know, the, the t- ticket scalping world had been considered sort of the underbelly of, of ticketing yeah. right um but the internet has sort of created a safer place for for resale yeah. it, it just really was a good medium for that industry to flourish and so um this is sort of 2008 2009 that this is happening and um yeah it was just it was just the right time okay so you see so you jumped into the ticket industry right so what happened there by, by this point, I, I have all these web skills, right? I can build websites. I'm really familiar with SEO, digital advertising. Um, so I, I think everything just combined. And yeah. so I started a company called Secure Box Office, which is, you know, I talk about resale. It's very similar to a StubHub. But the niche we filled there was we really dove deep into local advertising. So our first site was a site called HoustonBoxOffice.com. Uh, so it's just serving the Houston area, and it just caught on, like, really quickly. Uh, so we scaled over 100 sites throughout North America within two years. So zero to 30 million in revenue in wow. two years. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Quickly. So so you get well. What, what do you what do you look to see? How did you get? How did you make that jump to in two years? Like what was the secret sauce? I guess. Or do you have a secret sauce? Or was it just like hard work? Or um, well, it was a confluence of of things. It was the industry just really coming into its own at that time it was the skills i had but a lot of luck of course yeah um but also just an idea um to present consumers um with the events and tickets and seating charts that they wanted in their area mm. and so it just it just was one of those things so from there take me to the next so now that's that was running from 2016 right is that the one so that was founded in i guess 2011 2011 okay yeah, yeah. and so as soon as I start making a little bit of money um, on the side, start reading investment books. Okay. And so that's sort of uh, in the same way that I've been going to class and, you know, studying coding at night. I was, you know, doing doing the business during the day and reading Warren Buffett and Howard Marks books at night. And um, I remember one one time I called uh, 
I didn't have enough money to, to work with a really good stockbroker, but my, my parents did. And they, they said, well, we'll get you in the back door with him. And I called him and, um, we talked for two hours about, I think bank of America stock. Wow, okay. And I was, I got off the phone. I was like, wow, that's, that's really cool. You know? And, uh, so that's simmering. And so, uh, we run that business for five years and go through all the hardships of founding a business with, you know, bootstrapping a business, no capital, capital, um, borrowing family members, credit cards and maxing them out and paying them back the next month. And, and the whole story, but, um, 2016, we sell that business and I'm ready to move on to the next chapter. Okay. So 2016, and then how long you've been thinking about making this, this current jump that you're in? So this current jump really wasn't planned. Okay. So I, I actually planned to invest in technology. So I thought I'd use those skills yeah. combined with the investing skills. I thought I had some of at that time. And, yeah. um, I thought I'd invest in technology, like an e-commerce website or a SaaS type company, but um, two things happen. One, I, um, I'm looking at the valuations of these businesses. So, yeah. um, I'm seeing just to give an example, a really tangible way, yeah. a, a e-commerce site that makes a hundred thousand dollars might sell for $600,000. Whereas the coffee shop down the street that makes the same amount might sell for 200. Yeah. And so I'm starting to see that. And then, um, my wife had been pregnant and our son is born, but he comes two months early. So he's about three pounds when he's born and we spend two months in the hospital wow. sort of caring for him and getting him up to speed and talking to doctors and making sure everything's okay. So I have all this time to reflect, right? Yeah. Cause we're there sort of, uh, call it 8 AM to 9 PM every day. We, yeah. we live five minutes away so we can go home and get some sleep, but that's, that's our schedule. Yeah. And, um, and so I just decide, Hey, you know, if we, if we can get up to speed and take care of this little guy and meet all these doctors and do all this research and, care for him then it's t i'm i'm able to now to take a leap and try something different and so that's how value street is born wow. and all that is coupled with um if you work in tech you know that you're sitting uh oftentimes in a dark room uh pecking at keys and and one one character and a thousand lines of code can bring your business down and that gets old after a while yeah. <laughs> and so i was ready to be out here and do things like this with you and meet, meet the community and and just talk to bankers and business owners and entrepreneurs and just do do more real things in the community. So how, how much, so you have a background with SEO, with coding, and then you jumped into the investing a aspect of it all. With technology, how fast it grows at such a rapid pace, how up to date are you with the, the coding, with the SEO at today's standards? I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm behind the curve, honestly, just being okay. out a, a year or so now. Yeah. Um, everything evolves so so rapidly. Tech is a bit of a treadmill, uh, yeah. so you have to stay on once you get on. I think a lot of people that work in the Valley, uh, up in the Valley, can attest to that. So you have to, if you jump in, you have to be prepared to stay in until you feel like you've, you've, you've done what you want to do, and then, then you can get out. So with the, the, current, uh, the current company that you have, how, how does that work? So you assess the company, mm -hmm. and then you want to figure out what, how you can take it to the next level and also supporting them financially or mm -hmm. some kind of support financially, correct? Yeah, sort of. I mean, we're we're really looking for businesses that are already doing something really well. Okay. So we, you know, when, when we look at investments, we're essentially planning for zero growth. So we want to feel comfortable investing in that business, knowing that it might not grow at all. Okay. And then certainly... Uh, if the business allows for it, if, if it makes sense, you want to professionalize that, that organization or however we, we might be able to and help it get to the next stage. Yeah. Okay. So does your background in the coding, your background in, well, I'm guessing the investing um, in the SEO, does that play a factor then in when you're assessing a property or how does that, how does that work out? No. So, so not really. Okay. Um, so like I said, I'm, I've always just been a student of, every discipline I could get my hands yeah. on. So, and that's the beauty of investing. You know, you're combining math, science, philosophy, yeah. um, interpersonal relationships. And so now I'm not, I'm not necessarily looking to apply those skills, yeah. although I found that they are really applicable in a yeah. lot of scenarios. Yeah. Um, you know, tech in general is something that small business owners, not that they, they can't do yeah. it. It's just that they ha they're putting out so many fires on a day to day basis that yeah. it just kind of gets put on the back burner but it's a really powerful force if, if used properly. Yeah. How, so what would be the, the structure of, and I'm just very curious about this, especially yeah. if, if you're looking locally here, San Diego, mm -hmm. and then also other, other States, would you, how involved would you be with, with each of those entities that you bring on under 
um, that you invest in? Mm-hmm. So I could see three possible scenarios here. So okay. one would be um, the company already has management okay. and they don't need us. Maybe they just need us to act in sort of a CFO type role, um, do some forecasting, do some budgeting for them, but otherwise they're, they're already doing what they need to do. The second scenario would be uh, one of our team would go be the CEO of the company yeah. if we felt like there was value to be had there. Yeah. The third would be we would source uh, an operator, we call them. So yeah. we have a network of people that we like and we think have interesting backgrounds and have, have maybe the grit to, to do something like this. Yeah. And so we keep those people um, close at hand in case the right opportunity arises and we can place them in a good position to be successful. Have you brought any um, companies under your on your brand or investing in companies at this time in the last four months? No. So okay. we've seen about um, 200 businesses wow. so far, and we've made an offer on one, uh, maybe a couple upcoming here soon. Yeah. Um, but the way the investing process works is it's just it is a matter of volume, yeah. um, particularly the way we invest. We're, we're very disciplined about, like I said, we, we really want to make sure we're investing um, in things that can be around for a very long time. How are you finding those companies, those 200 companies, and in, in it's a fairly short window of four months. How are you right. finding those companies to, s- to say maybe you might be a good investment for us? Well, it's it's a mix of mediums. So okay. you probably know being a real estate agent, there's business brokers. Yeah. Um, and then there's different types of intermediaries as well. There's investment banks. So it's slightly you know larger businesses, possibly than a business broker, not necessarily, but... Um, uh, investment banks are, are a good resource. And then there's what we call proprietary deal flow. In other words, we're meeting people in the community that have businesses and might want to sell. Or uh, oftentimes we don't do this very much, but people will cold call business owners. Um, wow. We tend to not prefer that route. We were looking for a more personal connection, but yeah. um, that's another option. And th- this is, for, for at least for this podcast, this is a very uniqueness because you're still fairly fresh inside this business for the last four months. Right. That you have a very interesting story because you've, grown other businesses you've you've jumped around what struggles have you seen just i guess not necessarily in this business right now but also just in your life of of going from the seo building that out building their company and then jumping here what kind of like struggles have you seen um definitely work life balance issues um i think my wife can certainly attest to that it's you know when when you're working on a business and and even with this firm now and I don't want to want it to seem like I'm, I've, I've sold the business and now I'm I'm not working much. I think I'm working just as much now as I was then. Yeah. Um. So it's always a balance to make sure you're spending time with your family and and taking some time to rest and do what you know, the things that make you feel good and um and then of course capital. I yeah. mean, uh, capital is always an issue even for us. Um, we're we're a very small fish in this this investment world. So, yeah. um, that's a big one too. So with regards to the, the family, that, that balance you have right there, has, have you always had a conscious effort to incorporate your family in your routine, or has it been more so once you had your child? It's, it's been really natural. Actually, my wife was a partner um, in a few of my businesses, so okay. um, that really helped because we didn't have to update each other at the end of the day. Yeah. At the, we, we could come home and just sort of relax with one another, and, and so that was easier. Um, but... I think once you once you have a baby, it, everything gets amplified, and you, yeah. you really don't want to miss things. And so I'm 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 definitely making it more of an effort to be there. I don't want to miss bath time. I don't want to <laughs> miss the books, you know, at night. I want to make sure I'm there when he goes to sleep. So um, it, it's always an, an effort that has to be made. How do you how do you handle? And it, maybe it comes with ease because I hear some horror stories of people that are married and also work together. Mm-hmm. And there's actually people that I, I know that are realtors, and they go, okay. You're only focused on this part of it. I'm yeah. only focused on this part of it, so we don't have that conflict. Yeah. What about you guys? How did that work out? I think I'm lucky. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I've heard all the stories that you've heard. I've yeah. seen it all as well. Um, my wife and I are very similar personalities. We're both really laid back people. Um, and so I think it's just easy. And yeah. um, she's maybe more of the on the ground detail discipline, and I'm more of a, a head in the cloud streamer type. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think th- those skill sets. It really matched up well, yeah. And with with regards to the, the capital, we're talking about having that as another struggle. Mm. How does that how does that play out when you're talking to to entities or companies that you're looking to actually invest in? Mm-hmm. What's what's I guess what's the perceived negative? Do you show the value? Hey, we're a small mom and pop. We kind of turn it, and or how does that work? Well, I think we have a, we have certainly have enough capital to do a few a few deals here. Okay. So we're not. I, I don't want to make it sound like we're we don't have any ammo, uh, yeah. but. 
um, you know, when you when you look at this industry, um, you know, Blackstone, who is a very famous private equity firm, yeah. they just raised a twenty-two billion dollar fund. Um, so they're not they're not so, fishing in the in the pond <laughs> we're in. Um, but it just gives you some idea of the scale of this industry and and yeah. the, the the lower tier that we're operating at. So there's um, I, I know for real estate when we're when we're talking to uh, people to, to list their properties and you always look at it, okay well one person might be a team the other person might be a solo agent mm -hmm. there's always a way to spin each avenue of it right so for you guys what's your sales pitch if let's say Blackstone is putting an offer or wanting to put an offer on a property <laughs> compared to you guys yeah. is there is there a way that you're able to spin it to say work with us because this is so and so forth yeah well we don't want to spin anything okay. so okay. yeah we, we're um, I think where we focus a lot of our time is just being really honest and authentic with business owners about who we are. Mm -hmm. Um, when I founded the firm, I spent several months sourcing, uh, partners essentially, or, or employees, but really partners for the yeah. long term. And so I found, you know, guys from really diverse backgrounds, um, to complement my skill set. Yeah. And so, no, we, we're just looking to connect with business owners on a really honest level. Um, more personal and, touch and, and see if there's a fit you know yeah. we're, we're values driven investors so we want we want as much as we want to invest in long-term uh businesses we want business owners to want a partner that, yeah. that wants that too and so it's very much has to be a a fit what so again i go back to uh to my industry mm -hmm. where there's 99 knows before you get that one yes sure right yeah and i know it's it's a little bit different because you're talking about 200 entities 200 companies that you talk to mm. and they might not be saying no to you yet there's 199 that you really didn't want to do business with or they didn't want to do business with right and there's only one that you actually put in an offer on sure what keeps pushing you to make that next call <laughs> to get that next call that next company yeah um that's a really good question it's i think you have to go into it knowing hey this is a numbers a numbers game yeah and i think knowing that we invest with so much discipline that we really do a lot of due diligence on businesses we we expected our our batting average so to speak on these to be very low yeah and i think actually business owners appreciate that at the end of the day they want to know that somebody's buying their company who understands what its needs are yeah understands what they want from it yeah. and and so it, it's a win-win i think uh in the end what if you could look back at that that college kid mm -hmm that was doing the coding that got, I won't say it, your brother giving you advice to yeah. do the coding. But <laughs> if you could talk to that person or maybe another um, individual looking to get into your field right now, mm -hmm. what kind of advice would you give them? Uh, I think, first of all, I, I would say, um, you know, when I was in college, I, I didn't take a business course. You know, I, I, I looked at, um, my school was quite small. We had a lacrosse team and a hockey team, I think. And I think they were 90% of the business classes. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm not a doc like that. I'm not a business guy. Yeah. That just doesn't fit me. Um, but over time I've learned that, you know, that attitude was so wrong. You know? yeah. And, um, every subject has, has different elements of different subjects. And so I would say spread your wings. Um, certainly if you know, if you have a field that you think you'd like to pursue, pursue that. But, but the knowledge that you gain from being a multi uh multi-discipline thinker mm. is so so vast yeah. and uh really helpful would you if you could go back in time would you jump into would you start this company that you're working on now earlier or i know some people say that well, the path that i came on got me to the point that i'm at now mm -hmm. yet would you start would i started this company earlier um, if I go back in time, do I still get to marry my wife? <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, I do. She's still involved. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe, okay. uh, maybe, I, I mean, we of course need, need capital. So it'd probably be more, more traditional finance route that I would have had to take to get here. Mm. But, um, yeah, I think the work I'm doing now is by far the, the best work I've ever done in my life. And so I'm enjoying it more than anything I've ever done. So yeah, definitely. What, what do you see uh, in the future for your, your guys' company? So I think we're, we're just taking this one step at a time okay. where, you know, the, I think the, the bias that you have to guard against in this industry is overconfidence. And so we don't think about being a billion dollar financial firm. I'm not sure we ever want to be. Mm -hmm. um, we want to really be focused on quality and, and connecting with owners in the right way and doing things right. And I think if we do those things, uh, the rest will sort of take care of itself naturally. What if let's say there's an entrepreneur out there or uh, a company, an individual 
that they're doing well, but they, they, they need that extra, extra push or mm-hmm. injection of, of life. What would be the best way of them reaching out to you? Oh, just, just email me or okay. call the, yeah, our office. Yeah, we're right here in Carmel Valley, uh, 20 minutes north of where we're sitting today. So, what, What's a good number for you? Uh, 858-724-2181. It's uh, our direct office line. And uh, okay. we're, we're, we work from, uh, you know, I think, 930 to 6 or 7 every night. So we're always in the office looking at businesses. We'd love to talk to anybody who wants to talk to us. Absolutely. So all, all day, if they're if they're ready to go, you're ready to go pick up that phone. Yeah, we'll get in the car and come see you. Definitely. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Well, you know, hopefully you guys got some some good tidbits. It's don't be closed minded. Be be aware of, of what's out there. And just like James was able to jump around from coding to uh, to investing to to his new venture, he's always kind of looked for the opportunities that are out there. There's opportunities out there. You just got to be aware of them, right? Absolutely. Yep. Definitely. Well, again, all you entrepreneurs, hopefully you enjoyed. Please tell your friends and please subscribe. Thank you for listening to The Road to Growth, Success of an Entrepreneur. Please like, subscribe, and stay connected. Visit www.vinnysd.com. Yeah, I created a website. Hope to see you again next week. Team Vinny SD, signing off.